people ever hear me. Okay, we are about to get started. Good afternoon. Welcome to the best of the best from the University Presses, books you should know about. My name is Kim Miller, and I am the Marketing and Membership Coordinator at the Association of American University Presses. The AAUP is currently celebrating 75 years of cooperation and service. The Association of American University Presses, also known as the AAUP, celebrates the 75th anniversary of its founding in 1937. AAUP is an organization grounded in a tradition of service whose members engage in forward-looking publishing programs and innovations. AAUP promotes the work and influence of university presses, provides cooperative marketing opportunities, and helps its 130 plus member presses fulfill their common commitments to scholarship, the academy, and society. AAUP members are active across many scholarly disciplines, including the humanities, the arts, and sciences, and are innovators in the world of electronic publishing. Both the history of the association and the future of scholarly com communications will provide focus for a series of events, including a University Press Week in November 2012, to mark the occasion of the AAUP 75th anniversary. For more information, please feel free to visit our website at www.aaupnet.org. Today we are here to launch the 22nd edition of University Press Books for Public and Secondary School Libraries, the bibliography that most of you have in your hands right now. The bibliography is a popular and trusted acquisition resource for librarians. Annually, the AAUP works with a committee of AASL and public librarians who examine, review, and then give a specific rating to titles that have been submitted by our member press publishers. The titles that make it into the bibliography are the ones that librarians feel are suitable for secondary school and public libraries. There are copies of the bibliography here at the session, and if you miss getting a copy here, they are at the Combined Book Exhibits booth, which is booth number 2410. This afternoon, five members of the University Press Books Committee will each present a set of titles that they feel to be the best of the best of the titles that are featured in the bibliography. At the end of the presentations, three members of this audience will be selected to win our book raffle. Each will win a predetermined set of six of the books that are being presented today. So if you haven't already, Please be sure to put your business card or a card with your name and contact information, including your email address, in the raffle box, which is in the back of the room. One last thing. Since we are being taped, I would, I would ask if everyone please take a moment to silence their phones or anything else that might have a beep or a ring. <laughs> also, if you need to leave the room, which I can't see why any of you would, but if you have to leave us, would you do so um, being mindful of the projector and any other uh, issues that might obstruct uh, someone else's view? So let's get started. Can we please give a warm welcome to our first presenter, Nan Blaine Hilliard from Zion Benton Public Library. Thank you all so much for coming. I hope I can manage to coordinate the AV portion of this as I'm talking. Um, I begged and pleaded with Kim to let me do a couple more books because I got so many wonderful books this year and I swore I would talk fast. So um, I hope I can keep to that promise. Um, okay, now how do I do this? Which, which, just tell me which one I press. This one is Okay, four. okay. I donate most of the AAUP books that I receive um, or that I re review and receive to my library, but this year, each year there is at least one book that I absolutely have to keep for myself, and this is this year's book. 
Uh, the author, Elizabeth Stillinger, has written extensively about antiques. Her late husband was an Americana expert and a regular appraiser on the Antiques Roadshow. Rather than write exclusively about objects in a kind of archaeology, she writes about those pioneering collectors, their passions and their motivation. First, however, comes a definition of folk art. The term was coined by a German art historian who said that folk art is not a static group activity. It is the product of individuals whose tastes and skills contribute to the vitality and constant renewal of the genre. For American collectors, folk meant ordinary people. In Europe, it meant peasants. Um, it meant people who were removed from sophisticated circles, creating objects in traditional local styles for local consumption. And that encompassed everything from pottery and glass to drawings and watercolors to household farm, other implements, products of specific groups like the Shakers or the Pennsylvania Dutch. Art simply refers to folk-made objects that exemplify an artful or competent and appropriate approach to design. The centennial of 1876 awakened an interest in old Americana, because even at that date, they realized that there were many things that had happened from the 18th century that were being lost. The um, concept of historic preservation began in the 1880s, when people realized that um, houses and ways of life were being torn down. There was a whole emphasis on new things. Stillinger writes about early collectors, Henry Chapman Mercer, who discovered Pennsylvania German folk art. The Mercer Museum in Doylestown in Pennsylvania it still has antiques of many kinds, objects that are interesting for their beauty, oddity, and historic significance. And if he felt that if one of these is nice to look at, then a dozen is even better. And I have been to that museum, and I can tell you that there, he has things in quantity. Um, and these are not in the order that I put them in, so wait a minute. Um, this is a picture um, of a 1752 kitchen recreated at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which was discovered by a curator, a curator collector in 1926, and this is how Americana objects um, had been displayed in museums. This picture is um, from the chapter about faith in Edward Deming Andrews, who not only collected Shaker furniture, but also promoted widespread knowledge about and respect for Shaker beliefs and culture. They made their first contact with the Shakers in Hancock, Massachusetts in 1923. One day while driving on, this is how collectors get into this. One day while driving on a collecting trip, they stopped to buy a loaf of bread from the Shakers. They left with a new passion, and they started collecting a household and a world full of Shaker furniture. Um, these collections, um, these are from the collections of William and Marguerite Zorak. You may recognize the name Dalov Ipkar, who illustrated dozens of children's books. The Zoraks <laughs> were her parents. They were born in Lithuania, but settled in New York City. They summered in Maine, and when there, developed an appreciation for folk art, so they decorated their entire house to accommodate their collections, and Peggy created her own folk art, which were hooked rugs, and that is the um, lion in, on the left-hand side. The Shelburne Museum in, I had to have a quilt uh, picture here. Many of you might understand why. Um, Electra Havemeyer Webb's Shelburne Museum, in Vermont is one of the preeminent collections of American folk art, and among the many items there are quilts. Uh, in this book, Sillinger t tells about the histories of all these people and how they came about their collections and their passions. Um, one wonderful quote from William and Bernice Chrysler, Chrysler Garvish, Garvish um, who bought lavishly, and they said simply, we love the stuff. It's quite an obsession with us. Their specialty were primitive paintings such as this cat, uh, which is oil on canvas, painted between 1850 and 1900 and now at the National Gallery of Art. 
in substance, the, the abundant illustrations, the elegant prose, the recounting of the thrill of the hunt stories, and all of the feuds and disagreements among collectors add up to a richly rewarding book for all Americana 